Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. And each week, Pastor Nanette Christofferson and I try to provide a brief introduction to a couple of the Bible readings assigned to the upcoming Sunday. This video will talk about the gospel assigned for Holy Trinity Sunday, May 30th, 2021. A brief look at John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. The Gospel reading for Holy Trinity Sunday is a familiar one. It's John's record of Jesus encountering the Jewish leader and Pharisee Nicodemus at night. And they discuss what it means to be born anew or born again. And our reading concludes with John 3, 16 to 17, affirming God's love for the world being demonstrated through the giving of God's Son. In this lesson, we have reference to God the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Verses 1 to 10 is Nicodemus visiting Jesus. Jesus has just cleansed the temple of the money changers. People were starting to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, or at least inquire about who he is. Verse 1, Nicodemus. He's not mentioned in any other of the Gospels. He appears here, and then in chapter 7, verses 50 to 52, and then again in 19, verses 38 to 42. John notes that he was a Pharisee and a leader. The Pharisees were a group of particularly observant and influential Jews, mainly in Judea, from the 2nd century BCE to the 1st century of the Common Era. The name is obscure, but it may mean separate ones in Hebrew referring to their observance of ritual purity law in ways that separated them from others. Or it could mean interpreters, referring to their penchant for studying and teaching biblical law. They are often portrayed as antagonists to Jesus. In the Gospel of John, they assume the role of persecutors. Also in John's Gospel, the Pharisees appear to serve as exemplars of Jews who might have opposed the spread of Christianity or who at least wanted to preserve the distinctiveness of the Jewish faith against the incursion of Christian ideas. What is interesting in this reading is that Nicodemus appears both here and at the crucifixion of Jesus to be an honest seeker of truth and becomes a follower of Jesus. Verse 2, he came to Jesus by night. That this encounter by night is, is significant because in this gospel, night darkness symbolizes unbelief and daylight symbolizes belief. Nicodemus does not know who Jesus is, but calls him rabbi or teacher and believes that God is at work in and through the signs or miracles Jesus does. Verse 3, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. This can also be translated born anew or born again. Verse 4, how can anyone? Nicodemus takes Jesus' words literally about being born again and tries to understand how a living person can re-enter their mother's womb and be born again. But Jesus goes on to explain in verse 5, He's talking about being born of water and spirit. Jesus tries to help him understand that the birth he is talking about is the new life that comes through baptism. Baptism of water and spirit. For Lutherans, Martin Luther often taught we need to remember our baptism when we awaken each day and before we go to bed each night. Making the sign of a cross is a, making the sign of the cross is a way to remember that in baptism, you and I have been marked by the cross of Christ forever, and we have been sealed by the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit, assuring us that it is God's action in baptism that claims us, saves us, and brings us into new life. The new birth Jesus references is the birth of understanding that God who made us in God's own image is a God who loves us unconditionally forgives us eternally, and sets us free to live for others rather than constantly be plagued by worry, fear, and guilt because we've not been or are doing enough to deserve God's love. 
water and spirit are vehicles of God's grace and initiate us into a transformed relationship that is dependent on God's love and acceptance freely given in Jesus and not our earning or achieving that from God. For someone who has devoted his life to being ritually pure, an expert in the rules and rituals of the faith, and developing a deep knowledge of God's law or Torah, these are radical words to hear that God's acceptance comes apart from human achievement or effort. So some questions. How have you struggled with believing that our baptism is God's declaration of love for us that will never, ever end or change? Why do so many devote, devote, devout followers of Jesus often describe that being a Christian involves believing in Jesus and I try to be a good person? Why is God's amazing grace freely given in Jesus not enough for some people? Verse 10, Nicodemus asks, Are you a teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? Or Jesus says that to Nicodemus. Are you a teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? And then verses 11 to 15, Jesus gives hints to Nicodemus of why he knows what he knows and who he is. In verses 13 and 15, he uses the title Son of Man, which is a messianic title. In John's gospel, like the other gospels, John emphasizes that he who is Messiah and Son of God is also Son of Man. John also supports the idea that as Son of Man, he has the authority to execute judgment. John's most distinctive contribution is the doctrine that the Son of Man who has come down from heaven will ascend again. He was pre-existent in heaven, verse 13, and he has come down from heaven and given life to the world, being true bread and the food that endures to everlasting life, chapter 6, verses 27, 32, and 53. He is the only one who has ascended to heaven, again, verse 13, Thus, Enoch and others are left out of the account. His ascension occurs by his being lifted up, verse 14. His disciples will see him ascend in chapter 6, verse 62. And his lifting up will show them that he is the Son of Man, chapter 8, verse 28. And he will draw all people to him, chapter 12, verse 32. Moses' lifting up of the bronze serpent, described in Numbers 21, verses 8 to 9, is used as a type of the crucifixion. Verse 14. Then we get to the very familiar part of this chapter. Verses 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. From the initial conversation and exchange around the need to be born again through water and spirit, Jesus leaves Nicodemus and the readers of this gospel what Luther calls the gospel in miniature. Of all the words recorded in the Bible, these two verses are probably the most memorized or referenced. Read these verses again and what words speak to you? We get an answer to why God took on flesh and dwelt among human beings. For God so loved the world. What does it take to lower oneself from a position of power, strength, and control and offer oneself in compassion, empathy, and vulnerability. We get another answer to why of the Creator coming to us in Jesus, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but have eternal life. God does not condemn people. God does not want people to perish, separated from the one in whose image we are created. 
This little passage invites all who hear and read to trust in the love from which we are made and discover the life, eternal life, rooted in that love, not just when we die, but here and now. This little passage really is good news because it clearly states that out of God's love for the world, Jesus has come to save us. We don't have to save ourselves. Our forgiveness and acceptance come through Jesus dying on a cross, and it is this act and witness that has motivated billions of believers to place their faith and confidence in a God who really is love rather than a God who's filled with anger or wrath. God bless you as you prepare yourself to celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday.